typically grey day today. Well, it's middle of January, so pretty normal. So I'm looking around the plot today, thinking, what am I going to do? I've got a few odd jobs, and I've got to consider that project that I alluded to in my last video. So I'm going to quickly look at the trench that I built, or dug, and I'd like to take out a few more inches of that while I've got some energy. And I've had a lot of suggestions about perhaps getting over there and removing some of the weed growth or even covering it up to aid prevention of weeds coming into these two beds. So I quite like that idea. I might not get to it today, but I think it's a good plan. And traditionally, I always have to get over and remove some of this growth on this old tree. Otherwise, I get far too much shade and that becomes a problem for growing. So I've got some jobs to do over there in good time. I've got an awful lot of mole activity. I've kicked that one over into the bed. And of course I've got that beauty developing there. I noticed this morning that I've got a couple of big humps of molehill on the edge of this bed. And then surprisingly, because it's much more damp down here. I've got one appeared this morning in the compost area. So quite a lot of mole activity, which is fine. I just use that mole mound for adding to some compost. Always helps. Look how that garlic's coming along. Every one of those buckets is shooting up nicely. And I put some in this bucket over here or half barrel where I used to grow a little bit of purple sprouting broccoli and various other brassicas. So I popped it in here and these seem to be doing really well. Got a bit of wire in there just to help with cat prevention. And the purple sprouting broccoli, we've been eating a little bit of it and there's quite a lot more to come. So, what jobs? are there that I could start. Well, let me show you. So there's this area, which has always been a bit of a problem to me because it gets overgrown and it's not particularly workable. It's one of those spots that I've never really done much with. And of course I added this enormous mound of soil when I dug out the pond. So, I feel like I could clear all that out. I'd have to find a solution for my water butts, but that's a possibility. There's another possibility up here. Now we've moved the silkies out, as you know, and they're in the polytunnel because they get so wet in these winter months. But one of the problems is I get too much moisture inside their run and well it did go through my mind that i could create a channel that's much more significant quite deep and goes all the way down the side of the run and that would make sure that any water coming in at the top end turned the corner and ran down and out and that might keep that area a lot more dry so that's something that i have been thinking about. I need to have a bit of a clear up here. So if I was doing this job, that would certainly help. So that's two. There's a third, which anyone who's been watching my channel for the last few years, oh, can't be rude and go past Mrs. K's plot or flower bed because she's been working really hard at removing the weed and just trimming things and it's done a marvelous job. I have got to get in here for her because I've got quite a lot of grass ingress. So I was sidetracked onto one other long standing job and you can see where the fruit garden ends and I go into the raspberry area. Well, 
it's a mess. It's been a mess for a long, long time. And it's just too difficult to get the grass out. And I think it would need a fairly major movement of the soil. And so that's one of the jobs that I could well do. And of course, there is one along the side of the fence, but I just don't think I'm gonna to get to all of these and therefore I've got to make a selection. So what's it gonna be? Around the shed, around the coop, and run, or through the raspberries. There's another job of course, which has got to be done. And it's really causing me some problems. I've had quite a few suggestions. And that of course is the decaying sides of these three beds. So that's a big job as well. I've been looking out for materials, but I've certainly not succeeded yet. And I'm getting closer to considering buying wood for doing this. But because I need the materials to do this, this one's going to have to go on the back burner. Although I've got to get it sorted before the growing season really commences. So I've got to bear that in mind when I'm doing other things. Right, what have I chosen? Well, raspberries. Yep. I'm definitely going to do the raspberries. So what does this entail? Well, it's a big job. I need to move my boot wash. Um, and if I'm going to start here, I need to be careful. I don't just flood the area when I empty that. So I need to get my head around that. And then I'd like raspberries this year. So whatever I do, I've got to consider carefully whether I can get it done and get raspberries back in the ground, ready to go on for the season. I think I can do that. They might not be as good, but I think it's worth a try. So I'm sort of looking at this area. There's a square here, which is not quite as high as that hump, which I've really got down to a point where it looks a bit just like grass. So I'm thinking if I could get to here, perhaps where these markers are in, from previous years and I could pull out all the raspberries and put them into pots then that would leave me with a lot of surplus soil because this slopes up and of course surplus soil has traditionally not been a problem for me because I move it and I think I'm going to do exactly the same so this area down the bottom, which I often talk about that I've raised the level of, it's not as high as it can go. If you stand here and look down, it still could take a lot more material. And of course, it's such a wide area that once you spread over the top of it, it doesn't actually raise it more than a few centimeters. And I've still got a bit of a ridge along there where I go on to the potato area. So I think that material could come all the way down and just continue to level this out and raise it. So I've got somewhere to put the surplus material. I'd need to find some pots for all those raspberries. And I think amongst my pot store, I'd be using pots like this. And that would be a temporary measure until I get them back in the ground. I did notice all those seeds there. I'm really not sure what they are. So I'm just gonna let them continue on in case there's something useful. We'll see. Anyway, I get sidetracked. So pots I've got, and all it will take then is a lot of effort. I don't mind a bit of effort, especially in the winter months when things are a little bit slow to get going but it would be nice if the fruit area could just carry on at the same level 
I mean, ultimately, I'm going to come across my path. I think that is going to be the barrier for where I stop. And if I leave a couple of inches, then I could always put some sort of retaining wall in there that steps up. And I think it'd be quite nice to be able to look down on here and have reasonably uniform raspberries. And there's enough plants here that if I do succeed in getting back to there and I entertain going into here, whilst there's a lot of material to remove and take down there, I'd certainly have enough plants to be able to have a good, well laid out raspberry bed. <sighs> Do you know, I've been putting this off. Well, some of you will know, probably for two years. But I feel like the plot's in really good order and it's sort of waiting for things to happen. And I've still got, wow, a good couple of months really before things get really cracking. So, raspberries it is. Well, there must be probably 30 plants that I could take out the ground over there. So I'm probably not going to have enough of these pots, but we'll see how we get on. There's four there, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I suppose I could use that, 17. 18, 19, 20, 21 pots. Well, that'll be a good start. And I have got some raspberries that I've lifted in the past, still growing over in the compost area. Right, I'm gonna get everything together and get in position. Right, tools first. My fork, my spade, and the job wouldn't get done without my Chillington hoe. This will probably do most of the work and it really does get through soil rapidly. So to get that into position, of course, I'm gonna need my wheelbarrow. The good thing about working up at the top there is that if we get in bad weather, then I can carry on the job because it's relatively dry and not far inside the gate. Well, because I'm going to put the raspberries back, fingers crossed, I'm not going to move these very far and I'm going to pot up the raspberries as I go and leave them in this area. That way, nothing has to travel too far. Well, first things first, I've got to move this quarter barrel, which is my boot wash. I'm thinking if I can tip it this way, at least it could run down the path. See if I can move it, get my barrow out of the way. I'm ready to take some of the first material. It's pretty heavy. Well, that wasn't altogether successful. Hopefully it will drain away quite quickly. But I've got myself a half barrel. I've got a couple of stakes in here that I want to take out, get them out of the way. I don't think there's any more. I'll remove those. And then what I think I'm going to do is a test lifting. Just get one of these raspberries out using the fork and remove the top grass because that's stuff that I don't want to transplant and just see what the root ball's like and how easy it is to manage and then hopefully get it into the first pot. Well, I don't think it's a bad time of year to be lifting raspberries. I gotta say, I'm not absolutely sure. What I am sure of is that somebody who knows will tell me 
and I've had quite a lot of comments about pruning my apple trees because one of the trees wasn't an apple tree it was a plum and the point was being made to me that stone fruit shouldn't really be pruned until a bit later i.e when the spring's starting and that of course is correct but all i did was trim the edges but it is an important point and well made that you shouldn't really prune a stone fruit bush or tree until a bit later on so just bear that one in mind well this is lifting and it's quite tough but i'm sure we'll get there we've got to get there right I think I'm going to have to take this cap of grass off. And actually, what I'm revealing is that this is growing through some chicken wire. And that's why it's so difficult. Goodness knows how long that chicken wire goes down this edge. But like all jobs, once you start them, you find something that's going to give you a challenge and I can see that chicken wire it ends there so it looks like everything that I'm going to take out here is going to be a bit harder work than I would like so I'm going to come in from the edge and try and lift this as I go I might even cut it as it's broken right get some tools so there we are that was a bit of a struggle because that chicken wire is wrapped around the roots. But what appeared to be one clump is in fact one, two, three, four decent rooted plants. And you can see how good the root system is on these. And all I need to do is get them into some decent soil. So for now, I'll just put them in pots and we'll see whether we can get some decent soil out of here to just bed them down whilst I do the work. Right, there's a bit of grass in there. Anything like that that I can get out now will save me weed problems later on. Okay, next one. Well, one thing's for sure, I'm not gonna be sure of raspberry canes I'm putting multiples into those pots and I've already got what, two four six seven pots and I've only just done that little section there so plenty of raspberries well it's interesting when you get in here once I got rid of all that wire which must have been here for years get rid of that uh, I'm into some reasonably good looking soil but it's full of this, which of course is cooch grass and bindweed. And I think I'm gonna work my way up to the edge and get this strip done and then just assess. It's a bit tempting to get stuck into this and start getting rid of everything. But I think probably the best way forward is chunks of work. And maybe the first is to get out as many raspberries as I think I can and then have myself a working area to start examining what to do with the soil. Okay, oh, I do like to talk, but I do need to work. quite physical but not too bad and I'm making quite good progress what I can see is that I'm gonna have many more raspberry canes than I need and I need to work smart here 
because I don't want to leave those bare rooted for too long. And whilst it may look from your angle that this is relatively flat, in reality, between this level that I'm at and the back of this newly made area, there's about that much gradient. So I need to get a lot of soil out there. I think what I'm gonna do is bring the sieve over and sieve as much of this as I can to get rid of the bindweed and cooch grass and any other weed in there. And that'll give me a decent soil and I'm gonna fill all these pots with it. That way I will have started the process of taking out some of this and I will maintain the growth and preservation of the raspberries. I'm beginning to think this looks like a big area with all that in store for me, but nothing to it. Let's get on. So that's got a nice barrow load of soil to fill up these, but I'm gonna at least double this. So I caught sight of a new plot holder who is just digging the ground up, he's doing a grand job. And I thought to myself, perhaps he'd like some summer fruiting raspberries. And he said, yes. So 10 are going that way. Now let's see, let's take all of these. And that'll get him started. If you want some more, he's welcome to them because I've got plenty. Right, let's get these firmed up. A little bit of this soil, make sure they're nice and straight because it might well be that I take these straight out of the pot and into the ground. Hopefully they will have rooted nicely. Don't want to use too much because I've not got oodles and it's quite an effort to sift those. Right. There we go, that's that one. A bit more on top. So each one of those pots is gonna take a fair amount of soil. I think I'm gonna be sieving for a little while. Right, let's get this one in. I'm just tucking the roots down as low as I can in these pots, getting the canes as upright as I can, and then filling. I can see some bindweed in there. I don't want that. It is fiddly, but worth the effort, I think. some firm. Two down, about 12 to go. Well that's going quite well. Two, four, six, seven in there. Seven pots and I've got another five there to fill so I need to do another barrow of compost and then move them over here because, well, I'm a bit of a neat freak. It's strange on YouTube. You get a lot of praise, of course, when people like what you do, and that's marvelous. But you do get quite a bit of criticism. And uh, somebody criticized me recently for saying that I had an OCD. And I clearly don't have an OCD. And you can only apologize if somebody was offended by that term. So, I'm going to call myself a neat freak from now on and hopefully that'll go down a bit better. Good times. Okay, so I think I'm just on tidy up now. I've got all those pots over. There's plenty of pots left because I've put a few in together and I need to sweep away all my rubbish and just get this a little bit level so that nobody trips and will be cleared up. And that'll be a really good start to what I think is going to be 
quite a long project. Well, that's me done for today. I do hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, then why not subscribe and click the bell at the top and then you'll get my notifications on a Wednesday and a Sunday at 8pm. And hit the like if you liked it. Dirkumbar.